Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Uses and Limitations of Physical Standards for Spot Colors. Presenting today is Mark Gunlock, a Solution Architect at XY Pantone. I'm Robert Grotans, a Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. If at any time you have any questions, please use the questions form to submit your question. We will follow up immediately after this webinar with your question. With that, I'll turn it over to Mark Gunlock to get things started. Great. Thanks, Robert. Okay, so let's start out with looking at your supply chain and where color goes wrong. Near the beginning of any print project, the desired colors are specified. In some cases, these colors are not communicated well throughout the supply chain. In other cases, the color is simply not achievable with the inks or the substrate that are, spe that are specified, but they're used anyway. In each step, there's a chance that the ambiguous color descriptions or the production limitations will lead to a shift in color and thus disappointment. However, with better planning for achievable color specifications and unambiguous color communication, the results will be more predictable and repeatable. Let's look at the sources for these problems and their solutions. So there's a lot of common physical guides available out there. And we're just gonna look at a couple of them here that are really you know, widely used. All these are good for color selection and designing with color. Fandex and printed guides, for example, are usually printed in a very tightly controlled print run. These represent libraries of colors like those from Pantone or colors that are important to a brand. Ink room proofs are made from, uh, in very small numbers and in many cases on the actual substrate, often before the first time the colors can be run by the printer. And an item called an LSD or light standard dark, these represent the range of acceptable color lightness and these are commonly used. Now, there are limitations to these standards. The Fandex and other printed guides are usually produced on a printing press of some sort. So there's naturally going to be some variation from one print to the next. Even though these are produced of very tight tolerances, no two are absolutely identical. The ink room proofs are known for variability across the proof. It's very hard to make it uniform on the ink room uh, proofing systems. With the light snare dark guide, you need to be careful about subjectivity, keeping in mind that the light and dark examples are the limits of what's acceptable. They're not optional targets. Also be aware that all of these physical guides are gonna fade over time and they're subject to fingerprints and dirt and various contamination. All of these physical guides are prone to these limitations, and that's why we must maintain a digital standard to go along with these physical standards to use with your instruments for measurement QC. Now the Pantone libraries include a number of different kinds of collections, okay? These libraries have been used for years and they are in physical books for viewing and selecting colors for your designs and in digital libraries for design applications and ink formulation and print production and QC. There are books of spot color inks as well as for CMYK reproduction and extended gamut printing. Make sure you're working with the right one for your intended print purpose and never measure the printed guides as a digital standard. You wanna use the Pantone supplied digital standards. Those are the same numbers that are used to produce and QC the books. Every printed book will vary a little bit from these target numbers. That is the nature of printing. You'll want to use the target data that all these books are striving to hit, not the results of a single book. There's a concept known as the error stack. This is the result of adding all of the sources of error in a process. In this example, we have 
uh, we're starting out with a master physical standard that we've printed <clears throat> and everybody's agreed on that they like for our new chip bag. Now we've made reproductions of these. We've, we've made many of them. We've shipped these out to different suppliers. Now our supplier at the top, their physical standard is about 0.4 delta E from the original one that we uh, agreed on. So it's still pretty close. But the ink room goes to produce this ink and they do the best they can and they get to a little over one delta E and everybody says that's all fine and let's go with it. And um, then they take that out, they make the ink, and then the ink goes out to the press room. The press operators run to that new standard that they've created, and they stay within one and a half delta E of that standard. Now, a second printer, the same kind of thing, we send to them another physical printed piece here as a standard. The ink room measures that and matches an ink to maybe around 1.3. They weren't quite as successful as getting a good match, but that's the best they could get on that substrate. They create that as their new target, and then they send every, the ink and that new target out to the press room, and the press room produces and saves within 1.3 delta E of that new ink standard that was created locally. Well, that's all well and good. It looks like everybody's staying pretty tight to the numbers here. However, these packages coming from these different suppliers, they hit the store shelves, and there's about six delta E difference between these. They look like totally different packages. But the brand owner is not going to accept that result. This is actually real data from actual suppliers for a consumer price company we work with. And we looked at um, exactly that scenario we just, we just presented here. In this case, we had three different converters. They were all targeting the, uh, the same uh, color, but they ended up in different directions. They were all pretty close to the original, but they were in different directions from the original standard they established their own press standards based on what the ink room could achieve. Their average delta E to their standard was quite low. So they were able to stay very tight to their own uh, standard they developed. However, when they looked at the comparison across all three suppliers, they had differences of up to three delta E and over. This was not acceptable. So how do we control that? So what we recommend is moving to digital standards. So rather than just working off of a physical chip, a measurement is made of that original uh, uh, standard that we agree on. And that digital standard is then what is distributed to all of our suppliers. These digital standards don't change, whereas the physical standards can fade. The digital standards will, should include more than just the LAB values. They should always include the spectral data from the measurement. This provides the best information for formulating inks. Even digital standards have some risk if they're not controlled. You want to make sure that you're working with the true digital standards, not something that was measured by an unknown or unqualified source. Once the digital standard is produced and approved, that data is the one truth for that color. Common ways that users end up with invalid digital standards are when suppliers decide to measure something they produced or some other sample or book as their replacement digital standard. This will not match the original standard and thus the production will not match either. Also, remeasuring of the same physical standard over and over throughout time to update your digital standard is also a bad idea. This results in a shifting digital standard to match an aged physical standard that may be faded or contaminated. There is actually an ISO standard for uh, that describes how data should be stored and uh, exchanged. This is the color exchange format, CXF. And um, X4 is the version of that that describes the, um, the, uh, the data that goes into this data file. The, this standard has gained support in almost all modern color production software. The minimum standards require only a measurement of the solid ink at 100%. There are also options in the standard that include some screen tint values, as well as an option to include ink printed over a black background. Some large print owners have been distributing their digital standards for years. 
Most of those have moved to the CXF format for distributing their colors. Let's talk about some of the different kinds of standards you can produce. The Pantone has a concept of the master standard. So many brand owners like to specify their brand colors of Pantone because they can use the printed fan decks to visualize their colors. And the books are similar enough that viewers in different locations can pull out their books and see and discuss the colors from anywhere. Also, every printer and ink supplier can understand what is requested when they're asked for a Pantone color number. The printed Pantone fan decks represent specified ink colors as they can be reproduced on a high quality, bright white coated paper. This happens to be an offset press. These can be easily reproduced on many offset press conditions, especially if running a bright white stock. If you're running, if you're printing offset, flexo or gravure on a similar bright white material, and if the inks you're using are capable of vibrant color, you have a good chance of achieving these colors in the book. So will this uh, set of uh, ink standards or color standards work for every print condition? What if you're printing on white film or clear film with a white backer, or say a folding carton board or any number of other types of materials on different types of presses. Some of these inks used in uh, these kinds of production have requirements for rub resistance or food safety or color fade resistance. Some of these inks are not able to reproduce some of the ranges of the colors quite as well. So this is why we've got problems like this. In this example, I might be able to reproduce the Pantone Master on my customer's bright white cup. But what about the brown crap sleeve that's going to go with that cup? Not going to hit it. No way. So if I'm producing the sleeve at five different suppliers, their ink guys are going to work very hard to get the closest match to this color. None can get close. Each of these examples is the best match that they could reproduce. In other words, the lowest delta E to my green. But these greens are in all different directions from my original. Which one is right? I can accept the reality that Brown Craft is not going to allow me to get a good match, but which ink guy is right? And what if I go to a new supplier in the future, a different location? What are they going to reproduce? Pantone Live has the concept of dependent standards. These are linked standards that are proven as achievable under several different conditions. This way, every ink supplier will target the same linked standard for my master color every time. I will not have to accept widely different results from different suppliers because I gave them each a target that, that anybody can hit. I will give them all the same achievable target for the specified print conditions that we're going to run. Pantone Live colors are stored on a cloud server as a subscription service for various software tools in the supply chain. So let's recap that. Digital standards are unambiguous and unchanging. CXF can be used to distribute custom digital standards, but be careful of the source. Pantone Master Libraries are a type of digital standard that's built on CXF but distributed via cloud server directly to my applications. And Pantone Live dependent standards reduce the error stack even more by providing known achievable targets for the ink room and press room. So as a result, if we start with a digital standard, or even better, a trusted dependent standard that the ink rooms will achieve a better match to the standard, and the press rooms will also match better, and most important, all suppliers in all regions will match better. This is very important when the product hits the store shelves. So how do we use these standards in the supply chain? Adobe applications can access the masters through the Pantone Connect uh, plugin, which can be acquired from the Adobe Exchange website. 
One of the coolest things you can do with this is to sample any color directly from the design file and get the closest Pantone master color. You can also share palettes that you've created on the cloud with other designers on your team. Pantone Live licenses provide uh, a tool for converting any colors that are defined as a spot color in your Adobe Illustrator application or your ESCO tools. This tool can be used for tasks like to find the closest Pantone master or dependent standard to a custom defined color or to change all the spot colors from a Pantone master to a Pantone dependent standard. Another tool that comes with a Pantone Live license is the visualizer. This provides a number of ways to view and compare the way that your selected color will reproduce in various libraries on different substrates. As you can see in this example, we have selected Pantone 485C as the master standard. And then in the lower right corner, you'll see the different dependent standards displayed. The top of these three is a carton that is printed on a flexo press with UV cure inks on recycled board. And this standard is only 0.1 delta E from the original master, a pretty good match. The two dependent standards below are types of craft paper. These craft papers are commonly used for bags and corrugated board. We can see the brown craft standard is over nine delta E from the master. That's as good as we can get on that brown paper. But the white craft standard is under five delta E from the master. If this corrugated box is to be used as a point of purchase display, the print buyer may choose to use a more expensive white craft board to improve the appearance in the store. Once the spot colors are decided on, the ink technician will need to make the ink. If a custom color standard has been established, color standard data in a CXF file can be provided to the ink room for use in formulating the ink. Alternatively, if the colors are Pantone master or dependent standards, you only need to provide the list of required colors and the ink room will access the standard data from the cloud. These digital standards will provide the unambiguous spectral data for the color software to match with the available ink colorants for the specific type of print application required for this project. In the press room, the digital standards are loaded into QC software so that the press operators can monitor and correct the color while setting up and running the job. So with digital standards, we've got a much better chance of meeting the expectations of everybody along the supply chain, keeping in mind that physical standards still have their use for uh, looking at colors for designing and choosing colors for projects, and occasionally you know, to be able to communicate colors in a visual way. But for actual production, you wanna make sure you're working off of the digital standards. So that's all I've got today. I'm gonna to turn it back over to Robert. Great, thank you, Mark. Uh, so once again, if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them. I will direct them over to Mark and we'll do our best to get you answers to those questions as soon as possible. We will end here for today. I'd like to thank everyone for attending and have a great rest of your day.